So the final video for this chapter is going to be about vertical motion model. This is an application of the quadratic formula and more specifically an application on solving quadratic equations. The main thing we need to know is how to use the quadratic formula, but in addition to that we also need to remember how to use our graphing calculator and how to solve by graphing. So we'll be doing those two things as we go through our lesson in this video. In this video the vertical motion model is represented by these two equations h equals negative 16 t squared plus vt plus s or h equals negative 16 t squared plus s these are not equations I'm going to ask you to memorize they will be provided for you on tests quizzes and the final exam for our purposes here t is always representing time and it's also uh, replaceable by X so as we're using our graphing calculator we're not going to use T in our graphing calculator we're going to use X and it represents time H is the ending or the final height of the problem since we're dealing with a vertical motion model we're going to be talking about an object that's in motion the H always represents the height that object is at at the end of its motion S is the starting height or the height that object is at the start of its motion and V is our velocity. Velocity is either upward or downward. If the velocity is stated to be an upward velocity that number is positive. If it's stated to be a downward velocity that number is negative. So let's do a couple examples together here. You dive off of a 15 foot diving board with an initial upward velocity of 3 feet per second how long will it take for you to hit the water? For all of these equations and all of these vertical motion models we're looking to determine first is this a throwing problem or a dropping problem? The only difference being a throwing problem has a velocity a dropping problem doesn't. That's us or an outside object providing an outside force the velocity to this object whereas when you're dropping it you're not providing an additional force you don't have to add anything the difference in the wording is just going to be whether you're given a velocity or not. So we're told that we have an initial upward velocity of 3 feet per second here. That means I know I have a positive 3 for my velocity because it's an upward velocity. Then we have to think about the starting height versus the ending height. You're diving off of a diving board. How long will it take for you to hit the water? If you're hitting the water, we always consider the water level to be ground level. That's a height of zero. Hitting the water is going to be a height of zero. And then 15 feet is our other height. So think about where is the object here, in this case you, starting and where are you ending. Well, you're starting on the diving board, so your starting height is 15. You're ending your motion when you hit the water. That's a height of zero. So one of the major, major things in this is unit in this section is going to be being able to pick out starting height, ending height, and velocity. Once we have those, we plug them into our equation. I know that I have a throwing problem here because I've been given a velocity. So instead of h, I use zero equals negative 16t squared and instead of plus v it's plus 3t and then instead of plus s it's plus 15 so really the focus here is what am I putting in for h v and s everything else from my function up here stays exactly the same and there are two ways to solve this now we could solve this by graphing in that case, I'm putting 0 in for y1, negative 16t squared, plus 3t plus 15 into y2, but I'm not using t, so t is equal to x when I put this into my graphing calculator. So let's go ahead and do that and get a sketch of what this graph is going to look like. Press pause and put that in your calculator. So you probably got something like this. And this isn't that big of a deal. We don't see the actual top of our curve here. And it's not that far off in this case, but in a lot of the cases that we're going to study, it's going to be not even close. So 
This is a situation where in all of these problems, we're going to need to change the y max. So our window is going to have to change all the time. And our general rule of thumb is that our y max needs to be bigger than h or s. So look at h and s. 0, 15. You need your y max to be bigger than those. Well, 15 is the biggest one, so in this case, I need my y max to be bigger than 15. So I might choose something like 20. That just means go to your window, scroll down to your y max, and type in something bigger than either h or s. 20, and then hit graph again. Once we can see the top of our curve, we know we're in good shape. That's what we want to sketch in here then. So I'll go in here and I'll sketch what that looks like. In fact, it looks something a little bit like this. So I'll change the color to make this a little bit easier to identify here. But we're looking at something like this. It goes up and then down. Now let's talk real quick about what our numbers are representing here. We're actually going to be looking at just one part, one interval of this. So think back to unit 8. We're looking at from here to here. That's the primary focus of what we need to be studying. In class, I'm going to ask you guys, why? Why do I only care about this section? Okay. But this is the starting height okay, at 15 feet. And this is our ending height. X and T are the same thing, so that's time. So what I really want to focus on here is my ending height. I want to find this ordered pair. That ordered pair is my zero, my solution, I'm going to get my answer from. That's where we press second trace five, scroll close to my intersection, and hit enter, enter, enter. 1.066 means this is at 1.07, 0. Our solution is that it is going to take 1.07 seconds to hit the water. So that's when we're solving graphically. We could also solve this algebraically. <laughs> Here's my quadratic equation. Remember, t and x are interchangeable. It's already in standard form because I have x, I have my x squared x constant, and I have it equal to zero. That means I can use the quadratic formula. In which case, a is negative 16, b is 3, and c is 15. I calculate the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. I calculate the opposite of B and 2A. When I calculate the discriminant, I get 969. The opposite of B is negative 3, and 2A is negative 32. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 969, all over negative 32. Now remember though, this says I have two solutions. Negative 3 plus the square root of 969 over negative 32, or negative 3 minus the square root of 969 over negative 32. And when I put that into my calculator, I get two solutions, one of them being x equals negative 0.88. And the other being x equals 1.07. Notice this matches what we got with graphing. This doesn't. Let's discuss why. This is a vertical motion problem. It's an application. We found this solution algebraically with the quadratic formula. The other one we found was this. But that doesn't matter. Because remember, x and t are interchangeable. t is time. We can't go back in time. 
So we can never have a negative answer here. We didn't start 15 feet up onto the diving board and dive 0.88 seconds into the past. That's what that negative 0.88 represents. So the motion that we're forming is this curve, but it's just a representation when an algebraically 0.88 is a solution to that curve. But realistically, we have to now take our brains into consideration and make a judgment based on what is real and what is just mathematically accurate based on the model. This isn't a solution. This is our solution, and 1.07 seconds is the same thing. I want you guys to go ahead and try the second problem on your own, please. Okay, I will, over the next couple of minutes, display things slowly, but look at this and determine the starting height, ending height, velocity, then equation, then try to solve it graphically, then try to solve it algebraically. Okay, so this is a drop problem. There is no mention of velocity at all. That means there is no velocity, and I just used h equals negative 16t squared plus s. Starts at 250, ends at the ground, which is 0. y1, y2. Now, before I go through, my y max here needs to be bigger than, I have 0 and 250, it needs to be bigger than 250. So when you put this in your calculator, you will have to change your y max in your window. Change it to something bigger than 250. Something like 275. You don't have to use what I'm using, okay. but it has to be bigger than 250. And you don't want to go to something like 1,000 and really go way over. Just go a little bit over. You want to be able to see things in your window, but not make it so small that it's impossible to understand what's going on. I made mine 275. That makes my graph look like this. So I would go ahead and sketch that. And again, what we're focused on is here to here only. All right, so I corrected mine just a little bit, but same idea, same curve, same idea here. Since that's my focus, again, I have S and H. I'm finding H, which is second trace five. Get close to that intersection. Enter, enter, and enter. 3.952 means it's 3.95 zero. This is h. It's 3.95 comma zero, which means 3.95 seconds for this to fall and hit the ground. See if you can verify that algebraically. In doing that, you need a, b, and c. What's b? Well, b is the same as your velocity. We don't have a velocity. So b equals 0. So when I'm using the quadratic equation here, the quadratic formula, I'm using 0 for b. Go ahead and check your solution algebraically here. So once again, we find x is negative or positive. In this case, both of them are 3.95. The only actual possible solution is the positive. We can't go back in time. x is time in our vertical motion model. We cannot go backwards in time that negative 3.95 represented this intersection. That's not the interval we're focused on. You do not need to solve it both ways. When we come to tests and quizzes in your homework, you need to solve it one of the two ways. If you are going to solve it using the graphing model, which many of you will, sketch the graph. I need to see you sketch the graph. It needs to be an accurate model of what you've, what you've written for your equation, and label your intersection point like we've been doing all along.